I'm Nicola Talent and you're watching Crime World, a podcast about criminals, drugs and the underworld in Ireland and across the globe. Make sure you subscribe to our channel and turn on notifications so you can be the first to watch all our latest episodes. You can also listen wherever you get your podcasts. Eamon, just let's remind ourselves why Ger Dundon is going to be in the dock in a court in London on Friday and what he's facing sentence for. Yeah, Ger Dundon, one of our old friends from uh, Limerick City's Underworld. So he, he's back in um, Wood Green Magistrates Court on Friday. Sorry, Wood Green Crown Court on Friday, um, where he was found guilty after a jury trial of uh, a blackmail plot in which he threatened to, to spatter two men's brains across the road if uh, 300,000 uh, sterling wasn't paid. So that, it, it was... Um, it was quite a complex trial. Um, if you remember, Cornelius Price was originally charged with it as well, another sort of serious gangland figure. Um, there's another other people, uh, Mark Kavanagh from Drogheda and, and Quincy Bramble, who's links to Limerick as well. Uh, and everybody else involved, uh, accused of this, was found not guilty. They were they were discharged by the jury. Um, Dundon is the only one. He was found guilty on three charges. He he was uh, he he was. I suppose he was found not guilty on, on several other charges. He wasn't too happy at the time when the jury found him guilty. He started shouting in court, apparently this is all a setup, something like that. So he wasn't he wasn't too happy at all. So um, that's what he's back for now. It's it's, t- it's two months since he was found guilty. Um, he was originally supposed to be... Oh, sorry, it was it's longer. It was January since he was found guilty and he was due to be sentenced in March. And that was put back then. I think that the, the UK court service is under considerable pressure these days with a lot of cutbacks and... Uh, lack of, um, uh, of of public prosecutors available for cases. So it's now listed again for this Friday and hopefully it'll go ahead and we'll get some resolution on this particular case. And he's looking at a potential um, serious, you know, serious sentence for this. Yeah, because, I mean, this was a serious crime while the others have been, you know, freed, they've been found not guilty. If we take the details of the crime itself, it was, th- these guys were held for a considerable period of time while this money was being demanded. Yeah, I mean, the charges read it was over July 7th to July 17th in 2020. Um, and, and these two brothers based in Stoke-on-Trent, they, they were they were to meet somebody uh, that, that was connected to Warren Cross in, in Belfast, who was murdered in June 2020. There was money that they were still due to pay. Uh, and when they, they, they went to carry out these people, then they, end, they ended up being kidnapped by a, a group of people. Um, there there were some heavily armed men with uh, machetes and so on. Um, they were bundled into whatever vehicles, their their own mobile phones, the keys of their own BMW were taken. And they ended up being brought out to um, a traveller site in, in Smithy Fen in Cambridgeshire. Now, I think one of the reasons why Jared uh, Dunnan, who, by the way, had changed his name by depot to Darren McLean and is referred to in all the court uh, proceedings as Darren McLean, the reason he, I think, was caught was he there was phone messages basically where he was demanding the money in which he made various threats, including that these men's brains would be spattered across the road if if they if if the money wasn't wasn't provided. Was this on his own phone or something, or they they seized the phone that they obviously? Uh, no, they 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 had. I think it was family members um, who obviously had called in the police despite being warned not to, uh, and and he was identified right. through that. Uh, so I mean, and I, I was pretty now. Some of it was heard in court, I believe. Um, so we'll see if we'll see if some of that might come out later in the week. If we can, if we can talk nicely to some people. We'll see if they release any of that uh, following sentence. And Staffordshire Police were the were the original um, police force that were used that arrested them uh, because that was in it was in their neck of the woods where the, the alleged or not the alleged, but where the the, the kidnap happened. And you see, I suppose while this kidnap in itself is interesting enough, given that Jared Dundon was such a significant figure in the Dundon gang. His brothers, Wayne and John, are serving life sentences in prison, along with his other brother, Desi. Um, but it all seems to link back and to be interconnected with what happened in April of 2020 in Belfast, in Ardoin, when Robbie Lawler was shot dead. Because... Jared Dundon, along with Quincy Bramble and Levi Killeen, were arrested um, later that day on their way headed south of the border. They were held by the PSNI, questioned and then let go. Levi Killeen unconditionally and Quincy Bramble and Jared Dundon were, were basically freed with no case to answer as such. Um, Warren Crossan was also 
arrested and questioned uh, in regards to that. And he was freed and he was later murdered himself at his mother's house in uh, Crumlin in the north of Ireland. But while the PSNI continue to be disinterested, shall we say, in in Dundon, Quincy Bramble or Levi Colleen, and they keep repeating this to um, bail hearings in court in the north, what happened in the days after that murder and what happened in the UK when you have Jared Dundon, you have Quincy Bramble and you have Cornelius Price together being arrested in this joint, what the, the court said was a joint enterprise to kidnap and extort money, but which actually has been laid on the shoulders of, of Jared Dundon alone. That would suggest that all these characters were working together and you know, it leaves a lot of questions there as regards to whether or not Robbie Lawler was actually double crossed by by the Dundons. Yeah, I mean, it's like a scriptwriter from you know a, a TV show was following following them around, coming up with new plot twists. Uh, I mean, and there has been many over the years involving the McCarthy Dundons. Some of the which, have, unfortunately, we're never going to get into the public domain. But you know, I mean, look, I mean, we know that uh, like. Shortly after the murder of, of Robbie Lawler in April, um, there was money handed over to some people in a, in, a, in a car in, in in the south, and that's subject to, to court proceedings at the minute. And it was nothing to do with the with, with uh, Levi Killeen or 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 um, uh, Jared Dunlan and Quincy Bramble. They weren't at the scene when when those arrests were made. But I mean, it just shows you such you know a, a kind of a wide network. And when you consider uh, the fact that you know the the story of of Quincy Bramble, Jared Dundon and Levi Killeen turning up, uh, you know, where Robbie Lawler was going to be shot. And then when you consider then when it came out more recently in the case involving gangster Barry Young based in Sligo, having met uh, Patrick Tier, one of the accused men in the hotel in Sligo the month again before Robbie Lawler was shot. So this goes back to, to March 2020. So you have this Sligo based former Dublin drug dealer uh, dealing with you know, guys from from Belfast who are, who are involved in crime. Somehow, you know, it, it seems as if members of the McCarthy Dundon gang are then somehow involved with uh, Robbie Lawler, who was under their protection, apparently, when he was in jail. And he's double crossed. This is all, you know, speculation to some extent. But uh, from what we know, the facts that are publicly available, it does seem it does seem plausible. Uh, and then he's shot. And then, you know, the connection, uh, Warren Crossan is shot dead the, the following month. Sorry, when I say the connection, the connection with the, the two brothers from Stoke-on-Trent is shot the, the following month. And then the following July, these two men in Stoke-on-Trent are kidnapped and pr- pretty much tortured and put in fear of their lives in this kind of fairly wild, reckless, crazy attempt to extort £300,000 from, from their family. And and that's what uh, Jared Dundon now is, is due for sentence for, for that conspiracy to blackmail. Um, while the others, you know, while the, there's no actual kidnap charges. I don't think have stuck on anyone. Um, he, he, he was, uh, I think, yeah, sorry, Jared Dundon is one conspiracy uh, to falsely imprison. So that's that's what he, he's got the three charges now that, that he's facing. I suppose to untangle that web slightly, right, for people, because there's so many names there. And I mean, even we find it difficult to, you know, to properly sort of even speculate on what happens. But to untangle it slightly, we have Cornelius Price, who is the one of the gang bosses on one side of that Drogheda feud. He aligned himself to the Maguire faction. And Robbie Lawler was their enemy as such. And Robbie Lawler and his brother-in-law, Richard Carberry, had underlings working for them that were once in the Maguire gang, but who were sort of lured out of it in order to make um, a name for themselves. And they the two sides went to war, basically. Um, Cornelius Price had earlier, before Robbie Lawler was released from prison, uh, hadn't he given him some handshake called the Judas shake or something like this, where he'd asked to put out his hand? Do you not know about this? I know about this now, and I know very little about prisons, I can tell you. You're the man with all the stories about the prisons. But I'll tell you this one anyway. Cornelius Price put out his hand to shake Robbie Lawler's hand in the, in the I was going to say the playground, in the, um, in the exercise yard. And it was kind of seen as, you know, possibly let's shake on this. Let's let's, you know, let's put our differences behind us. And of course, within a couple of hours, Lawler was jumped on and attacked savagely. It was the kind of uh, 
he was basically giving the nod to others, it was believed, to attack him. Uh, so they were sort of arch enemies. And what we know is that when Robbie Lawler was shot dead in Ardoin in April of 2020, that within hours of his death, Cornelius Price did a selfie video of himself in a caravan, presumably in the UK where he was in hiding. And he had about a half a bottle of rum in him and another uh, shot in a glass. And he held that to the camera and he celebrated the murder of Robbie Lawler. Mm. Robbie Lawler was one of the most wanted men in Ireland at the time because he was the chief suspect for the murder of Keen Mulready Woods, the young teenager from Drogheda who was um, kidnapped, tortured and dismembered and his body parts left around Dublin City in a horrifying um, story that made international headlines. Um, so we know that Cornelius Price was in was an enemy of Robbie Lawler's. We know that he celebrated his death. Jared Dundon was there at the time of his his murder. There was questions, well, are they with him or against him or what's the situation? It was known that Cornel or that that Robbie Lawler and Jared Dundon had hooked up in prison as such. The Dundons had been paid to protect Lawler. And, you know, were they friends? But then when you have some months later, Jared Dundon being caught alongside Cornelius Price in the UK, you realise, right. Well, there's definitely some sort of a double cross has gone on here. They're clearly foes, which puts Jared Dundon and Levi Colleen and others in a, in a very strange situation, being with him and beside him in the run up to his murder. Now, thankfully, we're able to talk about this somewhat because of the evidence given to court during these bail hearings and that Joe Brawley has uh, detailed what the defence believe happened um, to open court. But I mean, such a complex situation that if a double cross occurred, it would actually be quite traditional of the Dundons. It would be sort of their MO, wouldn't it? I mean, it wouldn't be the first time in 2003 when you had the murder of, of uh, Kieran Keane Sr. and the, the, the Owen Tracy, who was stabbed 17 times and, you know, left, left for dead. I mean, again, that was a double cross at the time. The Dundons hadn't particularly declared on either side of what would turn out to be a gangland feud that would last the best part of two decades, which saw 17 people killed, if not more. And again, that was, you know, the, it, it was kind of a night of the long knives. It was seen as a kind of uh, plotting into the future that, you know, we're going to clear the decks here. We're going to we're going to switch sides and make money. I mean, e even if you look at what happened in 2020, I mean, we know that 50,000 euro changed hands in the immediate aftermath of Robert Lawler's death. And then you have the following July, they're going after a 300,000 pound prize. So like, you know, in the, in the space of a couple of months, there, 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 there's, there, there's a, you know, basically gangland thuggery that could have netted them, you know, 350, whatever it is, nearly 400,000 euro. So that's an incredible amount of money just from two simple or relatively simple double crosses or, or, or two relatively simple kind of gangland um, uh, acts of criminality, presuming that other activities are taken over in the background. In the meantime, this is a nice little a nice little uh, kind of summer bonus that was going to, to come up for the gang. It just shows you the kind of the hustle that they bring to it um, and the fact that they're able to work transnationally. You know, they're working through through England, North, you know, Northern Ireland's um, the, the Irish Republic, they're probably working further afield. And the fact that they have so many different contacts and so many different criminal gangs that they're able to put all the various moving parts together and get a payday out of it, which is, it's, 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 it's sinister and frightening to see how, you know, gangs that would be considered mid-level or mid-tier can operate in such a way. I suppose the Dundons, what stands out is their violence. And that sounds ridiculous when you're talking about organised crime, the underworld where... That's what it is, a violent world. But I mean, even going back to 2008 and a kind of almost forgotten murder of a 20 year old guy called James Cronin. And he was killed in Limerick, uh, having gone out and basically dug his own grave. Cronin, a young guy, had been was believed to have been involved in the planning, plotting and execution of a murder some time previously and was believed to have been somebody that they started to worry about, that he might talk. He obviously was having some emotional difficulties with the previous murder of a young man. And they brought him out to that field and told him that he was digging to, they were going to hide weapons. 
And he, as he, you know, as he dug down three foot, they, he was, a bullet was put into the back of his head. And that's the kind of nature of uh, the wider gang and their capabilities. And probably they're very useful to everybody within the criminal underworld when they want to carry out some dirty work. Um, but at the same time, people will know they can't quite be trusted. They might also be doing a deal on the other side of the fence. I mean, that that is it's it's I mean, what you describe is just such a kind of a, a sinister, cold, ruthless approach that, you know, people who think they are, are useful members of the gang are in fact just, you know, disposable soldiers that can be used for their own ends whenever they want. And I mean, you had a kind of, a, I guess, a similar you very much had a kind of a parallel thing happened with uh, Cornelius Price and the murder of Willie Maughan and his girlfriend at the time, Anne of Arslan, and that they wanted to leave. They had been living in a mobile home in, in, in Price's yard in uh, in County Meath and they wanted to leave. But they feared that, you know, Maughan, who was possibly a driver in some crimes carried out by the gang, uh, just knew too much. Um, you, know, you know, like... The, the, I mean, Price's gang was involved in some pretty cold attacks as well, you know, in their feud at the White Houses. Um, that, that there's probably more that we don't know about, uh, or certainly that hasn't been kind of um, established yet. But I mean, it, they were pretty cold and ruthless. And I mean, and the, and the, the, the understanding is that, that Morn was, was, uh, was, was beaten to death with hammers and that uh, his girlfriend, who was believed to be pregnant at the time, that she, she couldn't be allowed to live for the simple reason that um, she had witnessed her boyfriend's murder. And so... They were both both killed and their bodies successfully disposed of that as yet they still haven't been found. I think it was 2015 that that murder, like it's still wide open. I mean, the death of Cornelius Price uh, this Chris, the, the, earlier this year, um, you, you kind of hope that maybe at this stage somebody might have come forward. I know there's been about five arrests um, in connection with the murder, but nobody has broken their silence yet because... You know, there, there's believed to be anything, you know, from 10 to 14 people may have witnessed that killing uh, or to some level have taken part in it or the cleanup or the disposal of weapons or bodies afterwards. So, I mean, there's a lot of people there who can, you know, should be able to talk. But, yeah, I mean, that kind of ruthlessness that, you know, that Price showed that definitely some members of his gang still have that capability. And, you know, very much the, the Dundons have shown more than once that they're, they're you know, very capable to kind of twist events to suit themselves, and they've been successfully doing that even from inside prison. Like they're extremely dangerous. Yeah, a savagery that goes beyond most. Um, and inside prison. So let's take it that Jared Dundon, by the way, is going to get sentenced one way or another. It's just going to be. It's not going to be a rap on the knuckles and out you go, son. Don't do that again. Uh, we can assume that the UK courts are going to take it very seriously and going to look at all those circumstances and the length of time those men were held in captivity, etc. But what will that mean? Is there like he's the fourth brother and um, he's the one brother that has been out and about mostly over the past few years. I had a little chat with him myself there one day outside the courts. Um, but he, you know, he's been in and out on, on on significant enough crimes, but nothing like murder. But this could be a very lengthy sentence for him. Does it completely disempower the Dundons or is there still a kind of a, a, a younger generation or associates coming up no there are younger associates coming up but it won't completely it, won't, it certainly isn't isn't going to um finish the gang it'll it'll still operate in some form uh, obviously how much power the likes of you know wayne desi and john and jerry can wield when they're inside will be limited by the fact that they're inside but they'll still hold considerable influence and you, you know a lot, a lot of the kind of the power that criminals can wield from behind prison is usually based on how much money they've squirreled away that they can still transfer cash and they can still get people to do things. And we've certainly seen that in the past with uh, with some of the, the, the Crumlin gangs, you know, uh, Brian Radigan being a prime example who was, you know, convicted of a serious drug offence while serving, you know, a life sentence for murder, which we know was later um, overturned into, into manslaughter. And I mean, it, it just shows you, like, you know, what they can do, even from behind bars. I don't think the, the Dundons have that kind of financial clout, but they do have a certain amount of, um, you know, sway over their own family members who, you know, are, 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 are be more inclined to carry out what they've been asked to do than not for various reasons. Um, I, I guess there's a certain amount of money left, but I, I don't think that they have 
you know, that huge amount of power, it'd be limited to within their immediate circle, what they can do. But by they're far from finished. I mean, there's definitely going to be, there is, we know for a fact, there's already a new generation coming up. Um, but like, you know, how, how effective they're going to be remains to be seen. But from the face of it, they look like they, they know what they're doing so far. So I don't think the Dundons are, are a, a kind of a, a, a beaten team, so to speak, at this stage. I think there's a few years left in them yet. And of course, they will have the, the spiritual guidance from inside. And in terms of being able to strategize what to do, they have a lot of time to sit and think about how to get things done. Presumably, they still have contacts that they can send people to, so, you know, to get advice or to, to look for something to be done. So, I mean, it, it, it's, it's you know, they're, they're, you're going to have four of them inside. I mean, three of them are, are effectively away for life. One of them, Desi's been in since 2003. We, we've seen that, you know, that didn't necessarily affect their, their operations. Um, Wayne spent 10 years inside and for a lot of, for most of the, the, the worst part of the feuding in Limerick and then was out um, for a while. Uh, and of course, there was an upsurge of uh, there was a couple of murders when they were out. Uh, so, you know, it's it's you know if, if I say that, yeah, no, they're finished. Yeah, Something's yeah, going to happen. Yeah. <laughs> so, like, you know, you just know that you just know that they're they're not finished. They they they. Yeah. I think they love it. They they enjoy being who they are, and they enjoy being being able to direct people to carry out crimes. And just go back just slightly because it's my lack of understanding of that. Warren Crossan, was Warren Crossan still alive at the time of this kidnap and extortion, attempted extortion? No. No, he, he was killed on April the 4th. So just to go quickly through the timeline, so you would have had Barry Young from Sligo meeting two of the accused men on the 16th of March. Um, like, you know, he was arrested and questioned, but he's never been charged in connection to, to Robbie Lawless murder. Um, and then you had Robbie Lawler was murdered on the 4th of April. You had Warren Cross and shot dead then in June 2020, um, you know, two months later. And then you had the two brothers from Stoke and Trent that were kidnapped in July. A month later on the basis that they owed money to Warren Cross and who was already dead. To, to Warren Cross and they went, they went to, they went to go and pay a contact of his. Presumably this is somebody, you know, the, the Dundons obviously knew about this or Cornelius Price knew about this. And we're, you know, we're into to to hopefully get a, a payday from their point of view. That's why I said, like, it does sound like there's a, a very clever scriptwriter, you know, walking around behind them with their laptop you know, coming up with new wheezes for the, and, a, and a new twist. I mean, it's a it's a mini series all in itself. Well, look, look forward to hearing what happens in the court and what sort of comes out of that sentence hearing. And obviously um, anything else that the police in the UK are willing to, to disclose about the case. So we'll chat maybe next week when I'm back. I'm going a little absolutely yeah look at you where are you going <gasps> I go to Canada <laughs> excellent yeah. nice one. I'm actually looking forward to sleeping on the flight isn't that really pathetic that's where I am in life yeah yeah you'll, you'll see Mickey Moose anyway he's not yeah. as famous as Mickey Mouse but <laughs> I'll tell you all about it anyway thanks so much Eamon you're welcome you've been listening to Crime World a podcast from sundayworld.com produced by Ian Mullaney and edited by me, Nicola Talent. Research assistant is Claude Amini. If you like this show and love true crime, leave us a review. Or why not download the free sundayworld.com app for lots more stories from Ireland and across the globe.